All right, this is the start of the 2016 10A problem number 20. However, before I start the problem, I'm going to explain a concept that is pretty much, in my opinion, necessary to get this problem correct. It might not be, there could be a longer route, but this is probably the most efficient way um, to attack this problem. And so we're gonna do some examples of stars and bars. If you only, if you're very comfortable with stars and bars, you know the concept very well, I will put a link in the description that will skip straight to the problem's explanation. So feel free to go down there and click that and go right to the explanation of the problem. But for those of you who maybe are slightly comfortable with stars and bars or you don't fully understand what it is, we're gonna go over that first with, I don't know, a few examples actually. And I'll give each of the examples a timestamp in the description as well. Um, what is stars and bars? Um, it has different names, actually. I've heard from other people it's also called uh, rice and chopsticks, um, sticks and stones. Um, and so why, why do we call it that? Let's see. Here's an example of how it works. Three friends have seven identical pieces of candy, and each one has at least one piece. In how many ways can this happen? All you're going to do is picture the pieces of candy as dots. So we made seven dots on the board. Now, alternatively, you could make seven stars. But I've already made three stars in the time it took me to make seven dots. You know what I mean? These are pretty hard to make. So that's where stars and bars gets its name is star, the stars here. Now, what about the rice and chopsticks or sticks and stones? Uh, we need dividers. The bars are dividers. Uh, sticks, uh, chopsticks, uh, dividers, bars, all the same thing. And what we're going to do is we're going to put, we're going to place them here uh, on our own. We'll put one here and say one here. And this is going to represent the first person on the left, if you're grouping these three people, um, get, ha, gets one piece of candy. Four dots here means the next person gets four and the next person gets two for a total of seven pieces of candy distributed. Okay. So uh, let's see how that works then. We basically need to figure out where do these dividers go? And the deal is that for three people, you're gonna need two dividers, right? Because you create three groups when you do it. Now, where can the dividers go? Let's say I moved one to the outside over here. That's not really allowed because that gives zero, five, and two, and this friend doesn't get any candy. Maybe they're, I don't know, I'll make a joke, but maybe I won't. Uh, yeah, so basically you can't have this situation where you place it outside of the dots. Uh, furthermore, you cannot place two dividers within one uh, gap, if you will, gap between the dots. Because that again would indicate five, zero, two, and somebody would still get zero. Now you can for some problems, but we're going to approach those a little bit differently when we do a different example, probably example two. Um, so really, where can we put the dividers then? Uh, we can only put them in between the rice or the dots or the stars or the stones, whatever you want to call it. You can give it your own pet name if you want. Um, you can only put them in the gaps that are available. The question is, how many gaps are there? Well, if there's seven items, there's one less gap, right? There's six gaps, one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I had eight, there would be seven gaps and nine would give eight gaps and so on. So we wanna know each of these gaps can only get one bar and we have two dividers or two bars to place. So the answer is going to be six choose we have seven dots here right one two three four five six yeah six choose two right this is the way i write it you can also write combinations like this you can also write it as the combination of six things taken two at a time but i prefer this notation um, if you want to use your own notation that's fine as well or one of the other options um, so combination then of six things taken two at a time. What are the six things? It's the six gaps and you need to choose any two of them, right? So six choose two. Which two do you choose determines how many pieces each person gets. Let's say the people are Aaron, Brad, and Charlie, right? Then the first one will be Aaron's candy, then Brad gets the middle and Charlie gets the third, right? So that's how stars and bars works. Um, again, if you can't see, this is the bar. Those are the stars, right? These are the stones and sticks or rice and chopsticks and so on. Okay, so that's example one. 
Um, this comes out to 15. Really briefly, uh, you should know this shortcut. n choose 2 is equal to n times n minus 1 over 2. Uh, if you're not sure why, check it out on your own. I will have another video about combinations in the future that kind of goes through more of these uh, combination shortcuts. Okay, so that's it for this one. Let's get on to example two. All right, so this is example two. Uh, three friends have eight identical pieces of candy. In how many ways can this happen? A slight change from the first example. In the first example, they each had to have one. In this one, there's no guarantee of that. So if I put the eight dots out here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there are seven gaps, but now uh, if I could put two dividers here if I wanted, that's okay because we get two, zero, six, no problem. There's no guarantee that they each get one this time. That's gonna make it more complicated. How many slots can these dividers actually go in? Uh, you can't really think of it in that way this time. Instead, we're going to switch gears, and it's very much related, but we're going to say that each of the pieces of candy is the, a letter C. Five, six, seven, eight. And we'll make the dividers the letters D. Now, if I was to make a random setup, for example, this would be eight, zero, zero. So the first person gets eight, and his two friends both get zero, right? Uh, so then what can we do if we, if we went like this, C, D, C, 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 D, uh, C, 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 right? Then this would be the first friend gets one and then three and then four. That's a total of eight pieces of candy distributed. So in this way, we can think about it, uh, instead as letters, right? And you can just say, how many words can you create? And let's think about this in several ways. Uh, first off, you might already know that if I wanted to know how many words, which is a loosely used word, um, how many words can I make with this? How many arrangements that are unique could be created with these letters? It's the total of the letters, eight C's and two D's, 10, and then you need to choose two of them to be D's, right? Um, and then you could also say, what if I chose where the C's go instead? you could say 10 choose eight, and these are equal. You probably already know, but if the two numbers down here add to the top numbers, then they're equal. So for example, five choose two is equal to five choose three. Okay, so yeah, that's gonna be the answer for this problem. Um, basically where you place the letter D is determines who gets what candy in what order. Okay, so that's this example. In the previous one, there are formulas that go with these. So like in example one, the formula, if there's n pieces of candy or n objects, and you're, you're breaking them up into R groups, it's n minus one choose R minus one. But I don't know about you, but I'm not so good at memorizing all the formulas that I need to know. I'd much rather be able to derive it by concept, by thinking about it, like from internal memory, um, kind of uh, understanding the technique used rather than just the formula. Now, this one's not the same way. Uh, if I needed to divide by into three groups, it would be the n pieces of candy or n objects plus the r groups, which is actually three, and then minus one, and then it would be choose r minus one right? 10 choose 2 is what this would come out to. 8 plus 3 minus 1 over 3 minus, or choose 3 minus 1. Uh, and this one over here, we had 7 pieces of candy and 3 people. So if you put the 7 in here and the 3 in here, uh, it comes out to 6 choose 2. Um, again, I don't recommend you try memorizing this, but if you have a photographic memory, disregard that advice. Maybe you're good at memorizing all these formulas and you know exactly when to apply them. Okay, on to the next example. All right, so this is the last of the easier type examples for stars and bars. The next ones will get a little bit more complicated. Um, this one, you don't have to use stars and bars. That's the same with a lot of these problems. There's more than one way to solve them. And so it says, how many ways are there to put five indistinguishable balls, so you can't tell the balls apart, into two distinguishable, so you can tell the boxes apart. Um, so you could do it with stars and bars if you wanted to. Uh, you could say that the balls are dots, one, two, three, four, five balls, and we need only one divider, and technically it could go anywhere, 
uh, it could go here, 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 or here. And wherever you put it, like this would be one and four, one in the left box, four in the right box, they are distinguishable. Um, so basically, how many places do I have to place it? I only need one divider because there's only two boxes. So one, two, three, four, five, there's six places to choose one to be a divider. Uh, we could also have done it with letters if we wanted to. Um, we could have said uh, that the, the balls are all the letter B, three, four, five, and the letter D is the divider. And again, you will see it's six choose five or six choose one. Uh, either of those things is identical. Okay, so stars and bars is possible, or you could do letters. I forgot to mention in the last example how letters work, uh, the word thing actually. What you usually do, let's say there was two dividers instead, so three distinguishable boxes. Um, then how would this work with five and two uh, dividers? Uh, you could say that there's seven total letters and write seven factorial. And then you could just divide by the number of the copied letters, like the duplicates, there's five Bs, so you'll divide by five factorial and the two Ds is two factorial. Uh, this problem doesn't have two dividers, I'm just saying, so we can understand how many uh, ordered words we can create. But the thing you have to understand is that this is the same thing as seven choose two. So I've got seven total spaces to place letters choose two to be Ds. Or I could say again seven choose five and that's also the same thing. On to the next example. Okay this is example four of the stars and bars concept. How many quadruples, oh by the way this comes from intermediate, uh, I don't have the other book in front of me, Intermediate Counting and Probability, this book from the Art of Problem Solving. Um, it's problem 7.4, so it's from chapter 7, the section is 7.2, the problem is 7.4. Um, that's where I pulled it from, I just want to give attribution. Um, so how many quadruples A, B, C, and D of positive integers, this is important that it says positive integers, that's going to be your, the difference of how you approach the question. Our solutions to a plus b plus c plus d is equal to 17. Well, you can think of it just like stars and bars or rice and chopsticks. It's just that the 17 is going to be 17 dots, right? And we're not going to put them all out here, right? There's 17 dots in this list. And we need to break those 17 dots into four groups, which means we need three dividers. Once you start to recognize that rice and chopsticks are stars and bars in various problems, uh, you can just apply it pretty easily. It's not that hard now. So I've got 17 dots. If they all have to be at least one, that means no dividers can come out here. They can only go in between in the gaps and only one divider per gap. Right? Two dividers in the same gap would allow one of them to be zero, but this says positive integers. So it's actually a really quick... Uh, application of the concept, there's 16 gaps and you need to choose three of them. Calculate that and that's your answer. Next example. All right, this is the final example of the stars and bars concept before we jump into the 2016 10A problem 20. Uh, I chose this example because it contributes directly to our understanding of problem 20, like the kind of the thinking, the techniques that we're going to be applying. So, how many solutions does the equation v plus w plus x plus y plus z equals 21 have where v, w, x, y, and z, and this is important, are all non-negative integers? I would imagine that many of you have seen the word non-negative and did not consider zero and got one wrong, either in practice or on a real test. So I'm sure you're familiar with how careful we have to be with this non-negative integers. Okay, so it's a little bit like example four, but in example four, it was only positive integer solutions that counted. Now we're allowed to have zero. We could approach it like we talked about uh, in example two, and that would be consider it as, we're gonna use rice and chopsticks, and consider that there's 21 grains of rice, which we will consider as 21 Rs, right? 21, so there's 21 Rs here. Uh, and then we're going to need dividers, and to have five letters that take on, or variables that take on these values, uh, we are going to need four dividers. So there's four letter Ds. 
Uh, so what do we have then? We have 21 R's and four D's is 25, and we can either choose the R's or choose the D's. It doesn't matter. It still comes out the same. Uh, this will be the answer. If you calculate it, it comes out to 12,560. Um, now that's not the way they explained it in the book. In the book, it's AOPS, Intermediate Counting and Probability, Problem 7.5. They give another explanation, and I want you to consider it as well. Um, there's always, especially with counting and probability, it's better to be able to think about and attack a problem with multiple attack plans, right? Looking at it from different angles, and then on a test, when you're under time pressure, the chance that you think of one of those solution paths is greatly increased if you know more than one that you're capable of recognizing. So uh, the way they explain it in here is something along the lines of this. Uh, if you let V prime equal V plus one and W prime equal W plus one and so on all the way down to Z prime equal Z plus one. Now, uh, if, because we know that V is non-negative, one of its possible values is zero. And if it takes on the value of zero, no matter what, V prime will be positive. Right? Because it'll be 0 plus 1, which is 1. So V prime, W prime, Z prime, all of these have to be positive now. Okay, so then what if we added V prime plus W prime plus X prime plus Y prime plus Z prime? That would give us V plus 1 plus W plus 1 all the way down to Z plus 1, which would be V plus W plus X plus Y plus Z plus 5. And since this is 21, this becomes 26. And now we have five new variables that we created based on the old ones, all the prime versions of them, but these are now all forced to be positive. And now we could think of it as the normal rice and chopsticks or stars and bars. You would have 26 dots because that's what we have to equal now. And then you would need four dividers but it's not the dots you should focus on, it's the gaps between the dots, right? So one, two, three gaps, right? Then that's because there's four dots. And for 26 dots, you would get 25 gaps and you would choose four of them to be holding of dividers, right? So this is the same answer that we got in the, the other version that we did earlier. Um, so now we're gonna move on to the actual question, problem number 20. Here we